Greetings, brethren, friends, and YouTubers. I come to you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and the Most High God. This is Vlog Part 17, Surviving Persecution. I guess I could have also entitled this one as a spiritual message for targeted individuals. But be it as it may, I guess we'll just stick with this for the time being. Perhaps I may uh, re-upload this here to my other uh, channel. This video is also a follow-up to my past three videos or so and uploads. After watching some videos lately in regards to spiritual attacks, I have a word or two for you and a blessing. First of all, Jesus, our Master and Messiah, was persecuted re relentlessly, and so will we be. As Glinda stated in one of her videos, the time of testing has begun and will go into high gear uh, in 203 or 2013 or next year. This testing will include a lot of persecution and gang stalking. So, you targeted individuals who watch and listen to this, now is the time to start realizing that gang stalking is done by demonized individuals. Plus, now is the time to get serious about your relationship with Jesus, or you just won't make it. Period. Following this introduction, I have some scripture for you and a clip from Glinda's video. From God's Answers for Your Life Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leave for joy, for, behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not the, him that sent me. And that's from uh, John chapter 15. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness, say, Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that, whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. As from First Peter chapter 3. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. From First Peter chapter 4. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And that was from Romans chapter 5. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye, should, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in your, thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in, in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast... Cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again, and rend you. That was Matthew 7. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them 
their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. That's from Psalm 94. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, and they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. That's from Psalm 101. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. From Proverbs chapter 20. By faith Moses, when he was come to the years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Hebrews 11 Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to our, to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world began. And that was from Second Timothy chapter 1. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. Oh, okay. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. That was from Second Timothy chapter 3. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They, they are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. As from Romans chapter 3. Ah, uh, yeah, Proverbs 22, ah, uh, let's see. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Yep, Proverbs 22. Just love that Solomon. Uh, Kidoki. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endureth grief, su suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it, if when ye be buffed for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviles not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter chapter 2. That was it. Ah, uh, yeah, and then this uh, final one with uh, Isaiah here. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee, shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Ah, yes, Isaiah chapter 41, and thus was verses 11 through 13. Just a quick note here before we go on to these here uh, couple uh, psalms that I'm going to read to you. Um, in the prior one, I forgot to uh, reference the uh, passage which uh, started out with Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And that is um, from Luke chapter 6, verses 22 through 23. I just uh, 
sorry about that but i just got kind of uh in a hurry and uh, missed that but i just wanted to make sure that that uh passage got uh, referenced correctly psalm 23 a psalm of david the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pasture he leadeth me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leadeth me in those paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever psalm 91 he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Proverbs chapter 1 The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instructions of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace upon thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if, sin, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down to, into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our homes with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, Walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they wait, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without. She utter her voice in the street. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, 
How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set all not my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hate knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearketh unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 15 and 17. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 17 through 23. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all the armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people, for the handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live? by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls of them that make, that, that make to make them fly, and I will tear them from their, your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from the wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. In the doctrines, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, Bidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay. They do have access to some information we don't. It's, I've not found anything that indicates exactly what all information that might be. But obviously they knew that Jesus was the Son of God. So I think, and there seems to be some evidence to support that if you have a very high call on your life, that they know that even as early as when you're in the womb. I think that, and Joyce Myers talks about this a lot, 
I think that possibly there is some type of mark on you in the spirit and that because they're spirits, they can see it. But I don't know. I can't prove that. God gives his angels charge over us. Does it make you wonder what Satan does to copy that? I truly believe with all my heart that just the same as we're assigned angels to watch over us when we're born, I believe we're also assigned demons by the devil to try to mess us up. From the moment that we're conceived, I really believe that happens. Now, we don't want to spend all our time thinking about the enemy, obviously, but we also do not want to be ignorant of his devices. Just like 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, lest he get an advantage of us. That is exactly the reason that Satan does not want you listening to this series. It will arm you to take back what he stole from you, to protect what is yours, and to close the doors to his attacks. Since I've started studying for this, I have lifting them. And here's the thing with deliverance. With, with children, you can speak very quietly. What counts when you do deliverance is the authority in your voice, not how loud you scream. Demons are not hard of hearing. They can hear you. They can hear you when you whisper. I have had cases before where there was someone in my house, and I knew there were demons on them, and I just, like, walked into the next room or turned away and just whispered very quietly and gave commands to the demons, and, and they would start acting out through the person, and the person didn't even know I was saying anything. They can hear you. You don't have to scream at all. You can be in the same room with a child and start, um, if you have authority over the child, this is another, obviously she did, if you have the authority to do this, you can cast the demons out and just be sitting in the same room and a child won't even know you're doing anything. But you'll sure see the results of it. She did. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is you can do deliverance on a child without scaring them while you're doing it. Most people will say, oh, I don't want to do deliverance on them. It'll scare them. It won't if you do it right. You can do it without frightening the child. You don't ever want to frighten a small child. Don't, you know, they remember that stuff all their life. But it is possible to help them. And if you command demons to leave and no demons are there, you haven't lost anything by trying. So if it's a possibility that's a problem, you have a small child and they're acting out like that and you think it could be a possibility, if you command the demons to leave, and there's none there, it won't hurt anything. If you don't, it will. So that's another reason why it's important to understand spiritual warfare and how to help people get free. After we do the spiritual warfare, and at some point, probably at the end of the series, but I don't know if it works in or it fits in better. If you made it this far through this video, I take my hat off to you, seriously. This shows that you have some serious spiritual inclinations in regards to learning more about God and Jesus. Or you are one of my local area gang stalkers stopping by to spy on me like you usually and typically do. Woe, woe, and woe unto you, you gang stalkers. Do you remember Glinda's remark that persecution probably begins in the womb? According to Brother Thomas, it likely starts before conception and when one is still in the spirit form. And it's true that the devil knows your potential well before you are born and whether you are going to be a threat or not a threat to Satan sometime down the road. All because you truly belong to the Lord. So if you want to learn about spiritual warfare and deliverance, just click on the link below to Glenda's video which will get you to her channel. If you made it this far through this video, I take my hat off to you. Seriously. This shows that you have some serious spiritual inclinations in regards to learning more about God and Jesus. Or you are one of my local area gang stalkers stopping by to spy on me like you usually and typically do. Woe, woe, and woe unto you gang stalkers. Do you remember Glinda's remark that persecution probably begins in the womb? According to Brother Thomas, it likely starts before conception and when one is still in the spirit form. And it's true that the devil knows your potential well before you are born and whether you are going to be a threat or not a threat to Satan sometime down the road. And this is all because you truly belong to the Lord. Here's where the rubber meets the road, at least in my book. 
if you haven't been or aren't being persecuted in one way, shape, or form, or another, such as by poltergeists, supernaturally, spiritually, psychologically, demonically, physically, emotionally, harassed in public, gang stalked, mobbed, bullied, targeted, incarcerated, or etc., then you are in a threat to the devil, which is also referred to Satan and the serpent in the Bible. Glinda also remarked about the fact of being tagged or marked by Satan for destruction and death, because the devil hates everything and anything of God, and that includes you, my friends, and the devil will set up all kinds of events to take you out, which, will you, which you will see through my mundane and personal examples and life experiences. On the other hand, if you go to church regularly and everything is smooth and nice in your life, the odds are you are one of the lukewarm or fence setters which aren't a threat to Satan either and you won't get persecuted by the devil's minions via gang stalking. Only God's pure hearts get targeted in one way, shape, or form. Let me repeat this for you in another way. The devil never persecutes his own in this world. Satan goes after God's gifted and chosen children. Plus, a large percentage of persecuted people don't even go to church, give tithes to the 501c3 institutions, pray regularly, or give much thought about God and Jesus. See, what I think, these ones quite likely don't realize the fact yet that they are favored by God in some unknown way, and they were chosen out of this world by the Most High God. Somewhere along the line of time, they were put down and treated like shit by perpetrators, Satanists, bullies, gang stalkers, family members, and others that have been struggling ever since to try and climb out of their ruts. Now, this is what really pisses off the self-righteous and the churchy types. They follow all of the rules, or at least give the illusion that they do, and yet some alleged non-believer off the street is favored over them. Or, better yet, someone goes to jail for murder. While in jail, he discovers the Bible in Jesus. He commits his life to Jesus and is forgiven for murdering someone. I just love God's sense of humor in all of this. Don't you? Here's a thought, pun intended, for you churchy types and legalists. This world is just one big-ass ranking system or caste system. Everything has its military-style levels and ranking system, just like the Catholics' purgatory. But God doesn't have a ranking system like you whirlers, because all spirits, including his angels in his kingdom, are on equal levels. And if this is so, then we can extrapolate this concept over to sin and the Ten Commandments. This would mean that, in God's view, a little white lie or lustful thought, lustful thought about getting some sexual pleasure is as serious a sin as murder, blaspheming the Holy Ghost, or rejecting God. It has often been stated that a man doesn't start to get wisdom until he gets to be about 50 years old or so. This does make a lot of sense because at 50, one truly starts to take the time to assess the meaning of one's life. Wisdom and knowledge are two different things. Knowledge is, a, is just a memory thingy and simply a collection of ideas. Wisdom is about aligning and integrating that knowledge in respect to God. What this has showed me is how the Lord has worked wonders and miracles in my life and how I was divinely protected for years even though I didn't realize it at the time or graciously thanked Him for it. Now let's take a serious look at some examples of supernatural persecutions and attempts by the devil to destroy me. Have you ever sat back and wondered why you have had more lives than a cat and had more chances than any person you've known? Just like me, if you are a gang stalking target and are being persecuted, most likely you too have a whole lifetime of situation in which the Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua has divinely pulled you through them all safely and securely. Do you remember Glinda talking about when targeting of individuals begins? Do you remember what I said about Brother Thomas' opinion on this? Yep, this is true and real. 
When I was born, I weighed 11 pounds. Yeah, I was a real live meatball for sure. My mother told me that she was eating excessively during this pregnancy and gained an un unusual amount of weight, which of course I did too. I was told that I was very difficult delivery and almost died at birth. I came out blue and needed oxygen. I was rolled around a lot after that to ensure that I would get enough oxygen into my system. A few years later, when I was between the ages of four or six, I stuck a jackknife blade into an electrical socket and did the sparks fly from that experience. Everyone in the living room jumped out of their seats. When I pulled a knife blade out of the socket, only half of it was left and was a melted mess. When I was six, I was quite active and climbed up trees a lot, just like a monkey. I guess I must have thought I was a monkey or something like that at the time. Anyways, I fell out of a tree and was knocked unconscious when I hit the ground. I'm not sure whether or not I got a concussion or not then, but I learned my first experience of gravity at that moment just like Newton and a falling apple. As the years went by, I still continued to climb those trees undaunted and to build tree houses. Being a typical or untypical boy who likes to mow the lawn, I decided to mow the lawn one day. Of course, the lawnmower needed gasoline, so I clumsily filled that mower up with gasoline. Little did I realize at the time that the spark plug wire was unhooked and touching the mower's frame. When I pulled the starter rope, the whole mower went up in flames immediately. I quickly ran into the house to get help with the situation and my older brother moved the diesel tractor out of the way and uh, kind of cleared the way to prevent uh, everything else catching on fire too. Not only that, this uh, lawnmower was rather close to that gas barrel, but uh, everything turned out fine, thanks to the Lord. Some years later, I was on a mission to clean the barn, along with my brother. There weren't enough hoses to run the sprayer from the water tank, so I set up a water tank in the barn next to the water pump and spraying hose. Needless to say, everything was soaking wet with water next to that electrical pump and water barrel. The next thing I experienced after pouring 10 gal gallons of water into the barrel was a vibration going through my entire body. I felt this vibration from head to toe. When I looked down, I couldn't see the floor or anything below my knees. What I did see below my knees was a blue haze or cloud all around me and along the floor, flooring. Then the thought hit me that I was being electrocuted and needed to get out of there immediately. So I dropped the water can and jumped out of that dangerous situation. So this was my second big exposure to electricity. Some years later, I was entering the house and I heard a loud bang or pop sound go off. Then I noticed a hole through the front door. When I opened the door, I saw my mother in the process of unloading a 22 caliber rifle in the kitchen. If I had come to that door any sooner, I, I would have taken a bullet to my body. When I was in my later years of high school, we got our hands on a demolition derby car one summer. My brother and I would drive this heap of bolts and metal around the back roads and on gravel roads in the countryside. One time we were cruising along this gravel road about 70 miles an hour. Both sides of this road were very deep because of the drainage ditches. The next thing I knew was the car went into a sideways slide. I quickly cranked the steering wheel in the direction of the slide to correct it. Then the car whipped into a slide in the opposite direction and I cranked the steering wheel back the other way to correct that. Then the slides whipped again into the opposite direction of this, and I had it correctly correct for this too. Finally, this car straightened out. Needless to say, my heart was really pumping adrenaline after this. This close call with this was probably the scariest experience I've ever experienced because it could have killed my brother and I, and I would have been the one responsible for his death. When I was in the service, 
I led a life of extreme adventure. I was a paratrooper back then, and if you have jumped out of an airplane or helicopter enough times, then the odds are pretty damn good that you have had a few close calls. Yep, I've had to use my reserve chute a few times. What amazed me about these experiences and close calls is how one automatically discerns a deadly situation and acts upon it without even thinking. Yeah, it's just it's just uh, mind-boggling. Alcohol, motorcycles, and cars truly don't mix. I remember one time when I was driving a gal's car when I was drunk and wanting some sexual pleasure and drove it off a loading dock a railroad loading dock. It was an overcast evening and I didn't know where I was or where I was driving. Then I found myself driving up some kind of slope. For some reason I cranked the wheel to the left. All I, At that time I remember telling myself as I was going over this here uh, loading dock that this ditch is pretty steep and deep. The next thing I realized the car stopped and my face hit the steering wheel. When I got out of the car, the back bumper was hung up on the loading dock at a 45 degree angle. Of course, the front wheels were flattened from this impact. Motorcycles, yeah, I used to enjoy running up the speed and pushing that envelope inside and out on that Yamaha 650 Special when I was drunk. After a couple close calls, I sold it. You know the saying, strike three and you're out. Since these types of events over the years didn't take me out of the picture, thanks to Jesus Christ Yeshua, the devil has been using others such as demonized and weak individuals to get at me and attempt to destroy me. When people make fun of you, mock you, scoff you, ostracize you, harass you, pick on you, stare at you, diss you, roll their eyes at you, gossip about you, vilify you, and etc. Rest assured that there's a demon or demons that work here and in them. Since you are a child of the Most High God, demons, wicked spirits, and demonized people will come at you all of the time in one way, shape, or form. The devil uses these types of entities and weak vessels all the time in this way. And since the veil is getting thinner and thinner, it's getting easier and easier to discern for and detect these demonized individuals, their behaviors, and to foil their plans. Let me repeat this. Most gang stalkers and gang stalking participants are highly demonized. I could go on and on and on about examples. However, I think this video is going to be long enough the way it is. Plus, I would like to eventually share with you my mystical, supernatural, and spiritual experiences in some follow-up videos. Just a quick side note. I recently saw a pretty good video on sleep paralysis, which I will put the link in the description for you to review. Also, besides uh, Glinda's video, a link to that below it. And anyways, thank you for watching, listening to, and sitting through this video. May the Lord's peace follow you wherever you go. Goodbye, my friends, brethren, and YouTubers.